Hello everybody, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. We're going to continue on our odyssey, finding all the deep weird ass secrets of this game. So I'm going to jump into side stories to keep moving. Last time we had finished Trust Part 1, so today we're going to start with Trust Part 2. Uh, maybe... Well, hopefully nothing weird happens, so let's just jump into it. I heard eight passes in a flash and it's already time for the next club meeting. Old Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club, as she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. Yeah, I'm so stupid. How did I let myself let this be the center of attention? As Sayori is going through these kind of feelings, I'm letting her come for me instead of the other way around. What kind of club president does that? This whole time I didn't think to ask about her own feelings. So much for her stupid vision. Sayori enters the, sc the club room with her usual smile. But upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica, is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a little friend, huh? What are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself, and we just said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Terry responds quietly. What are you talking about? But she says that her face darkens. Till her silence already murders her realization. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. I know you're worried about me, I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Worldly Sajori nods. Friends, look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you are here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The is incredibly heavy. This is different. It wasn't just about just you yesterday, it was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy. So... If you do this, then you're just being selfish. Monica messages her forehead, throwing through the frustration is such a paradox. It's understandable that Sayori isn't ready to share certain things, but as unfair as it is, Monica to pry. It's a little painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. I do respect your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. So they, she already know about Sajori's depression. Okay. I understand that you don't want me to worry, and I think I'll be able to put this aside so that we can move on. But you can promise me something? Promise you what? Monica passes to collect her thoughts. This is the literature club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. It's fact, in a fact, it's our vision. Read the way into your heart or whatever. So I just want you to promise me that you remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. So you smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns to your smile. I promise. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So. Wanna teach me about poetry? Hold on, I'm I'm fixing this. I'm fixing my mic. Huh? <laughs> but what about the recruitment? I'm fine. It's fine. We have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. Uh, hold on. Ah. Ah. I mean, I don't have to fulfill the end of my promise, you know. <laughs> There's no way I could say no to that. I just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need a little some motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Certainly this isn't so hard. You kinda just need to write down your feelings to see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind in this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. Then you can turn your feelings into a little story. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first and then make it sound pretty later. It's like it's not like I build a railroad where you go from one end to another. It's more like collage where you find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. At least that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way. But it's a really good way to not get stuck right at the beginning. I understand. Yeah, I always get so caught up on how it sounds that I forget about what's actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper to start writing on. Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles you out, you idiot, after she writes it down. No, keep it. What, why? Are you calling me an idiot? 
course not. But the point is, they're not supposed to police your feelings, right? Be as dramatic as you want. But it was just... Oh, yeah. I need to screw my got right, you idiot, she stares at the paper. He words stare back at her. It's kinda funny how I wrote down what I'm mad at myself for, and then I did the exact thing anyway. This is really gonna take some time to get used to. I believe in you. Thanks, I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. <laughs> That's confusing. Uh, Monica continues to exercise jogging down her thoughts. It's a really quiet struggle to write without overthinking it. But after a while, with Sayori guidance, guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheets of paper began to look fairly lively, peppered with all of her random thoughts. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it. But it's also kind of liberating. Hmm. I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit. I have to try really, really hard at it. I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing. With you. Hey, your beams. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's just work a new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yeah, let's do it. When you get to Jerry, proceed with your work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply for the recruitment planning, but from the vision as well. As her band strengthens, so does the sense of the literature club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. Cool. Great. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first in the club room. With her print out of the best literature club flyer complete with all new ideas Monica and Sergei came up with. If only it was the flyer we gave that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one. But the new catchphrase is featured clearly in the center of the flyer, right to where into your heart. Surely common sense would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is the one that can't use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully Monica and Sajuri had thought that it would be enough to gain her to garner and some curiosity from students. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always like this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be present if I can even demonstrate that what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is really beginning to take form, but with that the weight of Monica's shoulders only becomes heavier. The debate club was always about reading structure, film lighting, airtight points and corner points, delivering them without conviction. With conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It, 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 it existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself for real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses her tip and pen firmly against the paper. But her hand doesn't move. Instead, a tiny blood of ink collects around the tip of her pen. Monica lifts her pen and starts to lift the blood. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her finger across it. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, running Monica canvas. Ah. Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica, just move your hand. Monica writes, This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. Cool. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down at the desk. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here. Hi. Monica hears Sajori approach her desk and stop for a second while I read the piece of paper. Then she sits down at the adjacent desk. Bad day? Mm. Me too. You too? The new flyer looks so good, you've been working so hard on the club, but that's something else, I think. <sighs> I can't do it, I'm sorry. So hard to just be vulnerable. Hmm. Sajuri takes the sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down, then stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. So that's why it's called, it's called trust. Sajuri gazes at Monica with sadness in her, in her eyes. On the same design, when Monica takes the paper from Jerry's desk and reads it. Sometimes I want to die. Mm. Sayori. This is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So if I can do it, then you can too. Because you're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Sayori takes a deep breath trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I never told anyone before. 
Even now my head is like screaming at me to stop. But you don't you don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of the promises today, I want to. Just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason they came to this club in the first place. This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. They really must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Where Monica owned future but genuinely the horse actually pushed that theory needed. The jury needed the little debris can be heard, heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you can just be happy instead? So I never tell anyone about these kind of thoughts that they have. It's so much easier to just smile and have everyone else be happy. But that's... terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone will worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that because it used to be like that. Sayuri passes seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. A lot of people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Sayuri passes again, her solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried. But I'll be one of those people too. I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this. But other part of me is thinks just feel like it will be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was the right thing for me to do, especially after you been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it with in confidence. And our friendship doesn't have to change. <laughs> so silly the club is only two people that really means that much to me. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart, a feeling of connection as the jury emotions right there between them. Me too. It was a lot until you showed up. This, this is like not working. Ah, 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 ah. Alright, there's that better. That's a little bit better. There we go. Just need to push this a little bit here. There we go. Hello. Hello, hello, there we go, that's better, that's way better, okay. You're so brave, Sayori, you're strong and brave, I don't even compare. Monica steps forward, but if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy, if you like. Wordlessly, without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Though their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, encanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all of the days that have passed this is the one where she really really hopes that nobody knew walks through the door. She speaks softly, you're like the sweetest girl I ever met. You can say anything, I'll never judge you. I promise. Sajori breaths begin to quiver. She takes several deep breaths trying as hard as she can to start speaking to say the thing she never once dared to say out loud. Finally she speaks in choked voice, I'm so worthless. And worthless in the will be better off without me. She surprises a sob as tear fall down her cheek. It's just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything, it just feels like everyone just has to put up with me. I hate it, I hate it. The more Sajuri speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling victim to overwhelming sadness, clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts, I just wanted to go away. Now I'm making you put up with me and just I just want to die. As soon as Sayori loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now. So she wouldn't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft and gentle. This isn't putting up with you, I'm just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort, but she knows Sayori said it to herself. That she thought Sayori's experiences are ones that don't belong, and Monica can magically make them go away. The most she can do is help Sayori battle them, like any good friend would do. You have so much value to me and your other friends, too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best thing that could have happened. And even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us vision and you also brought happiness. And that's what your favorite thing to do is, right? Every surgery doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. Number of words I needed between them. The two share their embrace for a while longer. Monica letting Sayori take as much time as she needs. 
Once her brilliant status and her sniff will fully cease, so you lift her head and with it and wipes her eyes. I guess I needed that. Some days are harder than others. But I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I make sure the things are the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Hmm. Thanks. You're the best. No, you are. The duo exchanges smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but... Have you considered take, take talking to a professional? So you're nuts. It's scary. Since it's not really so hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course, it will always be your choice, but if you're looking to find the courage for it, I can do my best to help you. Thanks. I think it helps knowing that you would. Seriously, only jumps and stretches. Well, oh, that made me tired. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, I'm, um, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up to it. No, I want to. I mean, I can say that's definitely one of the things that makes you happy. Monica smiles, but I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Hmm. Who could it be? We got new mail. Character discrepancy. Having run the control simulation for a while, it's evident that certain character is missing from any mention or appearance. This makes me speculate that Monica's meddling is less clumsy than we think, because she would have to manufacture this character herself as a way of forcing interaction between her and the user. Could that be why the character has such limited and content personality traits, or am I reading too much into this? I'll open an issue to start tracking info and observation on the anomaly of this character appearing. And with that, I'm going to end it here, because I'm going to do one episode for each side story. So, here I'm going to end it, and I'm going to say thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I hope to see you next time. This is getting interesting. When we're getting a little bit of a uh, backstory or maybe some in uh, some fucking explanation to what happened in the game. So, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I hope to see you next time. This is going to be me, Jesus FM. Going to strike, going to uh, see some shit. Because I'm going to the files of the game to see if something changes going out.